Welcome back. In this video, I will explain and demonstrate how to use the Opening Explorer on Lee Chess. If you're asking, what exactly is an Opening Explorer? Well, it's a database of chess games branching out move by move. It shows the common responses to each move and win-loss percentages for every variation. Sometimes it's called an opening tree or an opening database. Lots of chess websites have them. Today we're looking at the one on LeeChess.org. Basically, an opening explorer is an electronic version of an opening book, like this one, which is how people used to study openings. Everything in this book, and a lot more, is available anywhere you have an internet connection. The online versions are regularly updated to include new games and new variations. Let's take a look. We'll start with the website version, although it's also available on the app. To get there from any page on LeeChess, hover over the Tools menu at the top. It drops down, and the second option is Opening Explorer. Click on that. There's a very obvious chessboard with a bunch of first moves listed at the lower right. We'll look at those in a moment. Note that there are three tabs at the top of the move list. Masters Database, Lee Chess, and Player. The first is the Master Database, which includes about 2.5 million games by titled players. Second is the Lee Chess Database, which includes over 200 million games by the rest of us. Third is the Player Database, in this case mine. There's also a gear or settings icon to the right of those tabs. It does something slightly different for each tab. In my personal database, I can choose as white or as black, depending on which side I want to look at. I can select or deselect specific time controls, bullet, blitz, rapid, classical, and correspondence. Typically, I deselect bullet because I don't learn much from those games. I can further select casual or rated and the time period I want to look at. In the LeeChess database, the gear icon brings up similar settings. We can't choose by color, but there is the time control options with the additional option of selecting or deselecting ratings. Maybe you don't want to look at games by lower rated players or higher rated players. In the Masters database, the settings only allow us to choose a date range. Let's choose 2021 to 2022. I'm just holding the arrow while it scrolls up and then click all set. And now we have far fewer games. Let's set that back to the default range. Underneath the move list, there are player controls and the three-line hamburger menu, as I've heard it called. This allows you to flip the board, go to board editor, play against the computer from here, and a few other options. But back to the board. One feature of the opening explorer is the win-loss percentage, shown by these white, gray, and black sections to the right of each move. So in master level games, we see that if the player with the white pieces opens with e4, white wins 33% of the time, black wins 25% of the time, and 42% of the time the games result in draws. You'll also notice that the draw percentage shrinks quite a bit when we switch from the master's database to the Lee Chess database, and then grows when we move back. Further, note the arrows that appear on the board when we hover over each move, e4, d4, knight to f3, and so on. Let's click on e4, the most common first move in chess. You'll see that it plays on the board. See the text that appeared at the left? For each move you click in the database, this text describes it and the ideas behind it. For example, for e4, the king's pawn opening, it says, White's assertive opening move opens lines for the queen and the king's bishop and fights for control of the squares d5 and f5. This move is popular at all levels of the game and was the favorite opening move of world champion Bobby Fischer, who called it best by test, and so on. At the bottom of the text, if we scroll down, you will see a link to a Wikibooks article on this particular move, and it will also go into some detail about several popular openings that derive from E4. You can also see that the move we just played is listed at upper right. This area will keep track of all the moves we make while we're here. Back to the database. It says that black's most common response to e4 at the master level is c5. For the rest of us, it's e5. Let's click on c5. You'll see that it plays on the board, and the text on the left has changed, now describing the Sicilian defense. Again, down at the bottom is a link to the Wikibooks article on the Sicilian defense and all its variations. There's one more control at upper right, which is the toggle to activate Stockfish. This is the computer engine that evaluates positions and suggests good next moves, each with a number. Plus is good for white, minus is good for black. In the early stages of the opening, white will almost always have a slight advantage, according to the engine. The suggested moves here are knight to c3, knight to f3, and d4. 
Note that the moves suggested by Stockfish at upper right aren't necessarily the same or in the same order as the moves in the database below. D4, for example, is the third best move according to the engine, but it's the sixth most common move in the database. Another thing to note is that the evaluation of each move will change after you make the move. Right now, both knight to c3 and knight to f3 show an advantage of plus 0.3 for white. But once we make those moves, the evaluation changes. Play knight to c3, and the evaluation is now plus 0.2. If we back up and play knight to f3 instead, the evaluation is now 0.0. .0. This is, I think, because engines are notoriously unreliable in the first few moves of the game. I recommend turning off Stockfish for the first 5-7 to seven moves and just sticking to the database. I think it can be helpful to switch between the databases at different positions. For example, my personal database says I've reached this position 13 times when playing with the white pieces and 34 times playing as black. So I can see what I played in the past and how well it worked out for me. In this position, I usually played knight to c6 as black and I won most of those games. And when I was white, my opponents played knight to c6 most of the time, and it worked out pretty well for them too. In fact, knight to c6 is the most common next move in all of lead chess, but masters tend to favor d6 here. In other words, I think I can learn from comparing the three lists. Another feature of the opening explorer is at the bottom of the move list are specific games. For example, Caruana vs. Carlson in 2019. You can click on any of these games to see how they turned out. Here is that top game, and you can scroll through the entire list of moves and see that Carlson resigned in this position. Going back to the opening explorer, we can do the same thing in the Lee Chess database. Scroll down, and these are games played here on Lee Chess. The same thing is true of my personal database. These are selections of games I played here on Lee Chess that included the position shown on the board, and the list will change as I click through more moves. until eventually only one game will show up because I only reached this position one time. Notice that our move list is getting crowded at the upper right. We made several moves and tried several variations. Anytime that section gets too messy for you, you can clear it. Right click on any move and then click delete from here. Or you can just delete all of them and go back to the beginning. At the bottom of the page are sections for FEN and PGN. The FEN, or FEN, stands for Forsyth Edwards Notation, which is a standardized notation that describes the specific exact position on the board. It will change with every move. For example, did you see it change? The PGN section, or Portable Game Notation, is also a form of standardized notation, but it shows the sequence of moves instead of the exact position. It too will change with each move shown on the board. If you back up and try a different move, it's listed in parentheses as a variation. You can select the text and copy and paste it to a PGN reader or another chess website. You can also use this practice against computer button to play out any position you reach against Stockfish. It says it's our turn. Let's play a move. Oh, it says that was bad. There's also a running evaluation at the top, if that helps. We can also access the Lee Chess Opening Explorer through the app, though it looks a little bit different. On the apps menu, as shown here, there is no Opening Explorer, so choose Analysis instead. That takes us to this analysis board. Here we have to click on the very tiny book looking icon at the right, as shown by the arrow. I'm not sure why it's so small and it's kind of weird that it is, but that's how you get there. Now you see the moves listed at the bottom, just like we saw on the website. There's a tiny gear icon that appears just below the book. Click on that to change any settings. Here on the settings page, we can choose between the Lee Chess database and the Masters database. In the Lee Chess database, just as before, we can choose between rating ranges and time controls. Be sure to click All Set when you're done. There doesn't appear to be any way to access your own player database from here. You have to go to the website for that. Otherwise, the opening explorer on the app works just about the same way that it does on the website. So whether you're studying a specific opening, or trying to figure out which opening to study, or just looking how to respond for when your opponent plays that move, I think the Lee Chess opening database can help. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.